with drawing windows, I don't so much have a tip as a warning. So often I see windows that look like this, that have a very cartoon-like shape and appearance. And I think often they're drawn more from memory of cartoons than from observation of the window that's in front of us. And the way to avoid these cartoon-like windows is to take every opportunity to express three dimensions, height, width, and depth. So let's have a go at that in the next 10 minutes with this window. And if you'd like to have a go drawing this yourself, you'll find this reference on my channel community page. And you can print off a copy and have a go drawing it yourself. Now, if we were standing directly in front of this window looking straight at it, then there possibly would be no depth lines that we could draw. Because all the depth edges would be moving away from us in a straight line. However, we're clearly looking at this window from an angle, which creates a lot of depth on one side horizontally and vertically. So looking towards the left-hand side of the vertical elements and looking at the underside of the horizontal elements. So I'm just mapping out the outside of the window here. Now, the first depth that we get is the depth of the brickwork before the timber actually starts in the wall. Now, the windows sit fairly close to the surface of the bricks, but they are back a couple of centimetres. So if we're able to draw some long skinny lines accurately enough, it's great to give some indication. And it doesn't matter if these lines cross back and forth or if we end up doing three lines to get the two lines, so to speak, in the right place. If we're using tone, these depth lines also give us a place that where we can actually apply the tone for these lines that go backwards in the brickwork. So now we have various pieces of timber that are set within each other and on top of each other. And again, the temptation is to do a simplified version, a simplified outline instead of looking carefully and saying okay how many lines do I need to actually draw to create all the corners that we see here. The other place where we often stop drawing depth is the glass and yet glass is transparent and that does mean that we potentially can see through it depending on the light. So in this case, we can see quite a bit through the glass with more framing on the other side. And then past the framing, we can start to see some interior fixtures. We can see a pulled up Venetian blind. We can see a curtain that's pulled back. We can see a horizontal line that, I mean, I don't really know what that is. I thought it might have been the division of a bunk bed, but whatever it is, it's something we can represent. Now I'm realizing that my window goes in a bit towards the base, so I'm just re-establishing the line because I'm going to put a hatch in behind the glass, which means I can actually hide that line that's coming out now at too much of an angle. Never underestimate our ability to hide our mistakes. That's one of the reasons why we should never be as upset about mistakes as people often are because, well, for one reason or another, they're not nearly as obvious when we get to the end of the drawing. So I'm doing these Venetian blinds that aren't hanging quite straight, although probably if I could draw them again, I would make the blind look as though it is straight because otherwise it kind of just looks like a perspective error. So now I've got this curtain and I'm starting to realize that I'm running out of time with all the hatching that I'm going to have to do to do the tonal work behind the glass. And in fact, what I have done is I have sped up this drawing to one and a quarter times. So it's a little bit faster than real time because I do want to keep these beginners videos to 10 minutes. I hope what you're seeing with this is that 
what I'm doing is not difficult, it's just a bit time consuming. But I think the real benefit is, is to understand the three dimensionality of what even can look like a fairly simple window and to make an effort to include it in our drawing. Sometimes the scale is so small that we can't actually draw all the details precisely and we shouldn't try to. But even just by doing two lines close together instead of a single line, we can create the effect of depth even if it's imprecise. Even if we have two lines instead of three because we simply can't draw three lines without them merging into one thick line. That's quite possibly a better effect. Because when we draw, we're often drawing the effect of what we see, not the exactness of it. And that includes windows and all the lines that represent all the corners and insets of the various elements of a window, particularly a casement window such as this, but they're really common. So it's very helpful to have a sense of how they form. Particularly that we see the undersides of various elements of it as we have here. And if you're beginning in your drawing journey and you hope to draw architecture with any regularity, then looking out for the three-dimensional elements of a simple structure such as a window and seeking to at least indicate it in some way is a great way to create a realistic three-dimensional effect in our drawings because with a lot of walls they can be very flat and it's often the windows that provide a sense of depth of the fact that the walls have thickness or sometimes the window framing comes out out from the wall and that creates more visual interest and breaks up what can be a very blank surface. So now I'm doing the hatching. I'm doing all of this pretty quickly, so it's a bit it's a bit messy, but I am keen to keep these beginners videos to 10 minutes, as I said. So now I'm doing the uh, brickwork. I don't. You can see me. I've made a mistake with one of my lines there. Don't think I don't make mistakes. I've got a few lines in this drawing that uh, I would like to redo. One of them is that line there. It should be a bit lower on the right hand side. It doesn't fall in with the perspective angles properly and neither does that one I've just drawn under the window. So we really can't afford to leave our concentration when it comes to perspective angles. But since it's not what this video is about, I'm not going to worry too much about it. And so now a little bit of shading because to put some shadow or shade on the depth lines really does make clear which lines are which and where are their corners and that they're not just a series of parallel lines. And I'm also now trying to put some shade onto the curtain. It also means that the curtain sits back further behind the frame in the wooden framing of the window which creates more sense of depth because we're not just going back now to the very back of the the window framing but we're actually going back into the room now with elements that we can see so we cre so we do create a tremendous sense of three dimensions what we see through windows and reflected off windows can be tricky especially when we're drawing with a fine line of pen in ink but it's worth working out a way that we can represent the effect. Because if we enjoy drawing buildings, it's a fairly common thing that we'll have to draw. So I'm just, just finishing a bit more of the hatching here before I finish. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope you found this helpful. And why not have a go drawing it yourself? Creating a sense of three dimensions is a tremendous thing to be able to do if we like to draw architecture. So especially at the beginning, it's a great focus to have. But whatever you're drawing, however you're drawing it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.